The following is a production of the Atoma Radio Group Sports Network. It's now time for Atoma Baseball. Heard right here on your news and information leader, 1240 AM and 102.7 FM, KBIZ. Now, let's get you to the field with the voice of the Atoma Bulldogs, Jason Van Arkel. Atumna High Baseball is on the air. Good afternoon, everybody. We are in Indianola to open the 2022 season. Jason Van Arkel reporting. Annie Argo, the on-site video producer. Brandon Drew, the radio producer back at the KBIZ studios. And Atumna right into the deep end to open the season. A doubleheader at number 10, Indianola. Two teams that each won 30 games a year ago. The Bulldogs, of course, coming off a 30-10 and 10 season, making their first trip to the state tournament under head coach John Yeager, who's now in his 10th season coaching OHS. But this year, a lot of those names are gone. It was a 12-man senior class, Mitch Wood, Jesus Jaime, Trey Swartz, Colton McKinnon, among others. Uh, no longer Bulldogs. They moved on to bigger and better things. And now a couple of familiar faces and a lot of new faces as OHS looks to not rebuild necessarily, but retool. And we'll talk about this a little bit more here in the pregame show, but John Yeager's never had a losing season in a tumble, and he's got talent on the roster, just a lot of it playing at this level for the first time. And again, they'll get an early test here against Indianola. The Indians were 30-11 and 11 last year. They got to their sub-state final and were beaten by Johnston. Their head coach, John Fitzpatrick, in his second season now with the Indians, he went to seven state tournaments with Martinsdale St. Mary's before taking the Indianola job. And he's got a few players back of note, Casey Stecker, Brady Blake, Bennett Bruek, all in their starting lineup. A couple other players as well of note, but they did lose some as well. They're rebuilding, and the one difference right now between these two teams is that Indianola's played four games, and Ottumwa is playing its opener. The Indians have blowout wins over Knoxville, a blowout, uh, two blowout wins over Des Moines Lincoln in a doubleheader, but then yesterday they took on number three Johnston, who Atoma will face next week, and they got beat by Johnston 8-0, and that was with their ace Casey Stecker on the mound. So Indianola hoping to bounce back today, and Atoma, I should say, hoping to get off on the right foot. These two teams met a year ago, and as you recall, they used to be conference foes 2013 to 2016. That coincides with Coach Yeager's first four years in Atoma. Indianola was in the CIML Metro Conference, then they left for the Little Hawkeye, but Atoma has continued to play Indianola year after year. And last year they played a doubleheader at Legion Memorial Field and they split the two games, Atoma winning one five to four in dramatic walk-off fashion and extra innings, while the Indians won their ball game four to three, scoring all four runs in the third inning and then holding off on a Tumwa comeback. So these two teams very competitive over the years and hopefully another competitive doubleheader here for a Tumwa to open the 2022 season. Right now we'll take a two minute timeout, come back and get you the starting lineups on the Tumwa Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier, together. So let's get to know each other, because together is better. All roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. Wondering what to have for lunch or supper? Stop in and see Mike and his team at Mike's Pizza and Steakhouse. Whether you want amazing Greek food, pasta, salads, sandwiches, fish, chicken, steak, or the best pizza in town, they have what you want. They are always open for carryout, and their full menu is available at mikespizzasteakhouse.com. Thank you, Southern Iowa, for making Mike's Pizza and Steakhouse your favorite restaurant and your favorite pizza place. Proud to support the Ottumwa Bulldogs. Opa! It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you, 
great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels like home. You're watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network. The Tumwa High Baseball about to open the season on the road at Indianola here on KBIZ and on the live video stream. Let's check the starting lineup for Coach John Yeager's Bulldogs as Coach Yeager begins his 10th season with the Tumwa. Leading off and playing left field is Miles Saner. Batting second and playing third base, Carter Thompson. Adam Greiner will play first base and bat third. And Tanner Shark, the pitcher, will hit cleanup. Javen Rominger will play center field, Rominger batting fifth. Tucker Long is the shortstop. He bats sixth. Cam Mannery is catching. Mannery hitting seventh. Lucas Barnes in right field batting eighth. And batting ninth is second baseman Luke Reinhardt. We mentioned Tanner Shark, the starting pitcher. A year ago as a sophomore, he was nails. 6-0 plus a save with an ERA of only 1.67. As for Indianola and their head coach, John, Fitt, uh, John Fitzpatrick, this is their starting lineup. Leading off and playing second base, Bennett Bruick. Batting second is the shortstop, Brady Blake. Casey Carter, the third baseman, will bat third. And batting cleanup is the designated hitter, Casey Stecker. Cooper Belt will play left field and bat fifth. Gavin Legg is the pitcher, batting sixth. Batting seventh and playing first base, Lane McGraw. Batting eighth and playing right field is Andrew DeWall. And the number nine hitter is the center fielder, Luke Rockhold. In the field, but not in the batting order, being replaced by the DH for Indianola in game one is the catcher, Ethan Grimsrud. We mentioned Gavin Legg, the starting pitcher. This will be his second start of the season. He had a no decision in the season opener, throwing two and a third innings and not allowing any runs or hits. He did walk two, and he struck out five a year ago. And we're trying to bring up the stats on the little handheld computer here. A year ago, Leg pitched but struggled at times as he was 0-2 in six appearances with a 7.88 ERA. The two head coaches meeting at home plate. John Yeager, of course, for Atumwa and John Fitzpatrick for Indianola. And for John Yeager, we mentioned it's his 10th season here as a head coach of a tumble baseball, and it's been a decade of success. He's won at least 20 games in every full season so far. The only exception was the shortened 2020 pandemic year, and he's never finished below 500. John passed the 200 win mark for his career last summer. He has a winning percentage of 591, and he's captured three CIML Metro Conference championships. His teams have played in three sub-state finals and, of course, made it to the state tournament for the first time last year. 2021 was also the first 30-win season for Coach Yeager in his career, which is off to a fast start and hopefully will continue this year. Now we should mention, as we talked about Coach Yeager winning three Metro Conference championships, this will be the last year that Atomo competes in the CIML Metro Conference. It's kind of ironic we opened this year with Indianola because the Indians left the CIML for the little Hawkeye Conference after the summer of 2016, and that was soon after a failed attempt of Indianola, Atomo, Marshalltown and the Des Moines schools to break off and form their own conference. Six years later, a tum was on its way out of the CIML, along with Marshalltown and the Des Moines schools and a few others, to help form the new Iowa Alliance Conference in the fall. So sometime next month, or sometime in July, I should say, either the OA OHS baseball or softball teams will play the school's final ever game as a, mentor, as a member, I should say, of the CIML Metro Conference. The Bulldogs will wear their gunmetal gray jerseys, red lettering a tumble across the front trimmed in white, red numbers trimmed in white on the back, some red and white trim on the ends of the sleeves, white pants with red trim for the Bulldogs, and they've got red caps. Indianola wearing the home whites with some gold and purple trim. The numbers are purple trimmed in gold. Indianola in purple across the front trimmed in gold. I think they've got numbers on the lower left front of the jerseys as well. Purple and gold trim on the white pants and purple caps with gold brims for the Indians. 
played a lot of games here over the years in Indianola, including a playoff game against Des Moines Lincoln because Lincoln didn't have lights. That was way back in 2013. And at times this field can give up some long balls and today seems like it could be one of those days because the wind, which has died down a bit the last hour, but the wind is blowing out. In fact, as we check the current conditions here shortly before first pitch, we have a northwest wind at 11 miles an hour, and that feels like and looks like it is blowing out to right field. So left-handed hitters to their pull field. Ball might carry farther. Ball hit to the left field could get knocked down a little bit. They don't have dimensions on the outfield fence here in Indianola, but it's about a 10-foot high fence all the way around, purple tarp on it, and a yellow uh, rubber thing on top, or plastic thing on top of it for the yellow line on top of the fence. The batter's eye is taller, almost twice as tall in dead center field. The scoreboard's in right center. And we look over the right center field fence to see Highway 92 and Indianola Middle School. And we can kind of read through the trees a sign that says the Chris Street Gym. And, of course, that's a poignant memory for Iowa Hawkeye fans of a certain age. We can also kind of look over to the right a little further from that and see where Indianola's football field is. It's almost played a couple games there in the last decade. The Bulldogs have been introduced. The starters for the Indians are being introduced right now. Mentioned that Atumwa's starting shortstop is Tucker Long, who hasn't quite finished up his eighth grade year at Evans Middle School yet, but a lot of people have heard quite a bit about Long, mostly about his pitching. And an eighth grader who's throwing 86 miles an hour, he's already committed to the University of Iowa, but he's also a shortstop, maybe sometimes a third baseman. He can move around a little bit, but uh, looks like he's taking over the spot that Mitch Wood left behind when Mitch went to Iowa after last season. And I don't want to anoint a young man who's never played a varsity game until today as the next anything, but he's certainly poised to step into that role that Mitch Wood had and maybe be Atumwa's next great baseball prospect. But a long way to go and a lot of work to do before he reaches the accomplishments that Wood and his teammates did over their seasons. Time now for the National Anthem. We'll take a two-minute timeout for that. When we return, we'll have the first pitch of the season. Bulldog baseball is back, and it comes your way next right here on the Atumwa Radio Sports Network. Hey, it's Sam here, your Lisco sales rep. Summertime weather is just around the corner, so you know the drill. Construction is in full swing, and we have limited time to get your order on the list for this year. As you're prioritizing your goals for 2022, let's make you the priority. We can chat details about what would make your home or business data connection the most successful. To add or update your services, call me, Samantha Newell, for your Lisco sales and account management. 641-209-5400-209-5400, or visit us at lisco.com. It's more than an education. It's more than a degree. William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Opportunity in a diverse student body. Opportunity in a staff that works with your budget. Opportunity in over 30 programs of study. Opportunity in a classroom where your voice is heard. Find your future and the opportunities waiting for you. Start your planning today at wmpenn.edu and see why William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. Roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. You are watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network.
Atumwa High Baseball, 12:40 a.m. 102.7 FM KBIZ, the live video stream at Atumwa Radio or on the Atumwa Radio Group Facebook page, I should say. Good afternoon, once again, everybody. Jason Van Arkel with you from Indianola for a doubleheader today. Annie Argo, the on-site video producer. Brandon Drew, the radio producer, back at the KBIZ studios. Gavin Leg, the left-hander, on the mound for the Indians. The defense behind him: Cooper Belt in left, Luke Rockhold in center, Andrew DeWall in right. Casey Carter at third, Brady Blake at short, Bennett Bruick at second, Lane McGraw at first, and Ethan Grimsrud behind the plate. About to lead it off for Ottumwa, senior Miles Sainer, who was a part-time player for Ottumwa last year in the run of the state tournament and did well in his part-time role, hitting 347, driving in six runs, three doubles, nine walks, 12 strikeouts a year ago. Leg making his second start of the season, went two and a third in the season opener against Knoxville, had no decision. And we're just about ready to play ball again. Indianola is three and one. Atumwa starting the season right here. Right-handed batting outfielder digs in. Open stance. Leg works from the windup, peers over the glove to get the sign. And our first pitch of 2022 is on the way. And it's taken up and away for ball one. First pitch at 5.06 on this Friday afternoon. Now the 1-0. Swing and a miss. Took a little bit off it. County evens at a ball and a strike. One and one to Saner. The next offering from Leg, a swing and a miss again on off-speed pitch inside, and he's down on the count one and two. Sixty-five degrees our game time temp, overcast skies. The one-two downstairs count evens, two balls, two strikes. Wind blowing out towards right and right center. Northwest wind at 10 miles an hour. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Miles. Down and in, full count, 3-2. and two. Three and 2 to the Bulldog leadoff hitter. The payoff pitch. Up and away, ball four as he held off. And it's almost starts the season with the leadoff walk. Bring up Bulldog walks this season are brought to you by Marvin Boyer and Shelter Insurance in Ottumwa. That brings up the third baseman, Carter Thompson. Last year he was the starting second baseman for OHS. This year moves over to the third base spot now that Jesus Jaime has moved on to college ball. Sander gets a pretty big lead. He's going. Pitch is up and away ball one, and he's going to steal second without a throw. Big leg kick by leg. Saner went on first movement and steals the bag easily. One and zero to Thompson, who last year hit 271, drove in 21 runs. RBI chance for him here. Runner on second and nobody out. Pitch up and away, and the count two and zero. Sainer walked and stole second. Now a hitter's count for Carter Thompson, the junior. Leg from the stretch. The pitch. Low and away, 3-0. Adam Greiner on deck. Sainer last year was only one for two in stolen base tries. Didn't have many opportunities to run. He took his first chance of the season this time as leg steps off the rubber and Miles hustles back to second base. Outfield more or less straight away. The center fielder Rockhold a couple steps over towards left center. As Thompson taking all the way that pitch right down Broadway, three and one. Indianola ranked 10th in the state in class 4A in the preseason. 
Someone not ranked. The 3 1. Runner goes, pitch in the dirt, ball four, and Sainer's going to steal third without a throw. So runners on the corners and nobody out. Back to back walks, runners on the corners, and here is Adam Greiner. Adam last year mostly DH'd, hit 287, six doubles, a triple, and 25 RBI. Can be a little strikeout prone. But you put the ball in play here, you probably get the first run of the game on the board. Thompson a lead at first, Saner away from third, the pitch. A little bit off the plate outside, ball one. There is early activity in the Indianola bullpen. Daniel Keebler, a junior, a right-hander, is up and throwing. 1-0 to Griner, and the pitch sails all the way to the backstop on the fly. Ricochets back to the catcher. He cannot make a throw to the plate, and now the ball gets away, heading to third as Thompson. He'll slide in safely. 1-0 at Tumwa. They still have a runner on third now, and still nobody out. Base on the wild pitch. Thompson moves over to third base. So we are not the official score here. I've said that many times over the years. I think if I was an official score, the run scores on the wild pitch. Thompson goes to second on the same wild pitch, but then he goes to third on what I would call an error by the catcher Grimsard because he came up trying to make a throw and actually had the ball fall out of his hand and roll back to the backstop again. And that allowed Thompson to take the extra base. I doubt they will rule that an error as such. But at any rate, it's 2-0 to Griner. That pitch bounces in there, 3-0. And, and right now for the left-handed senior, Gavin Legg, the strike zone is something he is struggling to find. Infield is back for the Indians. They would trade a second run to get an out here with 3-0. Downstairs, ball four. Three walks in a row, and that'll bring up Tanner Shark. And before Shark bats, Indianola head coach John Fitzpatrick is out of the dugout, and that's going to be all for Gavin Legg. So he does not retire a batter. He walks three, and he'll head back to the dugout, and he'll be replaced by right-hander Daniel Keebler. We'll take 30 seconds, come back, and tell you about the new pitcher after this on the Atomal Radio Sports Network. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels like home. You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Right-hander Daniel Keebler is on in relief for Indianola a lot earlier than the Indians wanted to use him. This is his second appearance of the season. He He's 1-0, pitched four and two-thirds innings in relief in the win over Knoxville that Indianola had to start the season. He came on in relief of Gavin Legg that day. He allowed six hits but only one run. He hit a couple batters, but he struck out three. And again, got the win in relief after Legg had started that opener. Coming in for relief for the Indians is number 12. Keebler pitched in Keebler. pitched in one game last year. It was a start. Didn't have a decision through two innings. Allowed three runs on four hits, but that was a year ago. All right, so here's Tanner Shark. Left-handed hitting pitcher. Did not hit all that well a year ago. Chance to help his own cause here. First pitch. Upstairs, ball one. Shark at the plate a year ago hit just 163. He did have two home runs, and he drove in 15 runs. Also drew 18 walks. So even though the average is 163, the on-base 314. There goes the runner, and there's a ground ball foul first base side. Count evens at a ball and a strike, and Adam Greiner will have to go back to first. Greiner had a good jump. 
Talking to Coach Yeager before the game, all the power hitting a ton was had the last few years with Mitch Wood and Jesus Jaime. It's graduated, and this team is going to be built more like some of his previous teams on speed. Griner getting a big lead, dancing around, and Kabler steps off the rubber. I would expect to see this a lot from, from a tumble this year. Get guys on base and put them in motion. Griner's itching to go. There he goes. Pitch down and in. They will not throw through. Down to Two and one the count. Griner gets his first steal of the year. There's already been three stolen bases in this first inning. Saner stole second and third. Griner steals second. Now infield is in all the way around. Second and third, nobody out, one nothing to Tumwa. And a pop-up foul left side. Will the win keep it in play? It is caught for the out near the fence by the third baseman, Casey Carter, for out number one. That'll bring up the center fielder, Javen Rominger. Of course, Blaze Rominger was a multi-year starter for a Tumwa in the outfield, and now Javen will get his opportunity. I believe this will be his first varsity at bat. It comes with runners at second and third, and only one out. one nothing Bulldogs top one here in Indianola. The pitch to Javen. Blown away, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Carter Thompson, the runner at third. Adam Griner, the runner at second. The pitch. Popped up right side. That will not get the run home. Underneath at the second base in Bruick to make the catch, and there's two down. And now the infield will back up to normal depth, and it'll be up to Tucker Long if Batum was going to get more than one run this inning. We've had three walks and two pop-ups. Long, as we mentioned in the pregame show, he is finishing up eighth grade, but he is already committed to the University of Iowa. He's throwing 86 miles an hour on the mound and also playing... Some very fine shortstop. Left-handed batter here. And he takes a fastball strike 0-1-1. And, and that is the first called strike of this game. And it comes on the sixth batter. Gavin Legg walked all three hitters he faced and was immediately replaced by Keebler. Now the 0-1. Ground ball sharply up the middle. That is fielded by Bruak. The throw to first is in time. And the side is retired. Atumwa gets a run without a hit. They leave two in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the first. Atumwa one. Indianola coming up on the Atumwa Radio Sports Network. Performance Pipe in Bloomfield is hiring. They have three classifications open for hire. Molding operators, a molding setup, and a maintenance position. Performance Pipe offers a competitive benefit package, including medical, life insurance, pension plan, 401k, paid vacation, and holidays. Applicants must be 18 years or older, have a high school diploma or GED, and a valid driver's license. To apply, go to cpchem.com. Click careers, type in Bloomfield to see the details of each job and apply for the one that best suits you. Or Google Performance Pipe in Bloomfield and ask for D. Chevron Phillips Chemical Company is an equal opportunity affirmative action employer. You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Page. Bottom of the first inning, Ottumwa and Indianola Bulldogs starting off their season here. Tanner Sharkman staked to a one-run lead, although... They missed the opportunity for more. Shark, the lefty, warming up. The defense behind him has Miles Sainer in left, Javen Rominger in center, Lucas Barnes in right, Carter Thompson at third, Tucker Long at short, Luke Reinhardt at second, Adam Greiner at first, and Cam Mannery behind the plate. Shark 6-0 in the 1.63 ERA last season. Top three in the Indians order, second baseman Bennett Bruek. Shortstop Brady Blake, third baseman Casey Carter. Bruek through four games, leads the team in at bats with 14, but he's only batting 214. 14. Three singles in 14 at bats. He has driven in a couple of runs. Tall right handed batter. Number six. A junior this season. Second baseman Bennett Brick. Last time we saw Shark on the mound in a varsity game, he was 
throwing the final pitch of the sub-state final to send a tumble to the state tournament. His first pitch of his junior year is popped up right side near the Indianola dugout over for a look and making the catch is Adam Griner, the basket catch right in that on-deck circle. He and Cam Mannery converged and Griner made the call and made the play. One pitch, one out. Carter, nice catch for out number one. That'll bring up the shortstop. Here's Brady Blake, the shortstop. Of course, Blakes are a famous baseball name in Indianola. Longtime major leaguer Casey Blake before Brady. First pitch to Brady is fouled off to the right and off the screen, strike one. Both Brewick and Blake coming to the plate and swinging at the first pitch. Brady Blake on the young season, hitting 500. He is 6 for 12, two home runs and nine RBI in four games. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. Fooled him on an off-speed pitch, 0-2. Shark, of course, a multi-sport athlete, the quarterback on the football team. Logged a lot of minutes as a guard on the basketball team this past season. The 0-2. One hop liner, that eats up the second baseman Reinhardt, took his cap off into, into right field. And Blake is on. Brady has a nice single. We'll call that a base hit. Right field for a base hit. That ball took an awfully high hop. Number four, third baseman and I don't, I don't know if it actually caught the brim of Reinhardt's cap or if in trying to get his hands up to protect himself, he knocked his own hat off. But either way, that ball was scorched. It's a one-on-one -on -one out, and here's Casey Carter, the third baseman. Senior hitting just 111 through four games. Just one for nine. Does have a double and a couple of runs batted in. First pitch, way high, ball one. Boy, Andy, wouldn't it be nice if people would see the camera and duck under it as they walk by? I know we're, we are right behind a walkway, folks, so that's to be expected. But, boy, if I saw a camera and a broadcaster, I'd... At least duck under the camera. Just saying. Throw to first, and it gets away. Down into the corner. Blake hustling for a second. They're going to wheel him around to third. And the throw will just come back into the infield. Thought for a moment they might pick him off because Blake was stumbling to get back to the base, but then the throw was well wide. Nothing Griner could do, so that's an error on Shark. And now Indianola has the potential tying run to third with only one out and a 1-0 count to Carter. The Bulldogs will play the infield back. Shark working from the extreme third base side of the rubber. Always works from the stretch. The 1-0. Way high, 2-0. We've had a foul out, a one-hop smash for a single, and a two-base throwing error. Indianola with the runner at third and one out. 2-0 count, hitters count to Casey Carter, the third baseman. Tanner's pitch, high and away 3-0. Casey Stecker, the DH, is on deck. The wind blowing out, you got to be careful how you pitch to these hitters. They've already got three home runs in their first four games. The 3 0. Down and in ball four. So runners on the corners and one out, and here is Stecker. Batting 417, 5 for 12. Four of the hits are singles, but the other one's a home run. He's driven in five. A ground ball to short would be beautiful for Tanner Shark right now. Pitch down and in for ball one, and now Shark having trouble locating the zone. Casey Carter at first has one steal on the year. Indians already have 13 steals in four games, so they do like to run.
Tanner gets the sign from Mannery, the catcher. The pitch. Breaking ball, delayed steal, throw down to second. The tag, safe at second, and then coming home on the double steal is Brady Blake, and the game is tied at one. Close play at second. I thought maybe Reinhardt had him out, but the call is safe. Yeah, and third down to second. Blake scored from third base, and Carter's on down to second. So now the count 2-0, and game tied at one. A runner at second, still only one out. Pitch. Ground ball sharply to short fielded by Long. Long throw across is on the money. A cannon from Tucker Long for the second. Now Carter moves to third. But now there's two away. And the batter is Cooper Belt. Belt the left fielder hitting 250. Three for 12 on the season. Has a triple. Is yet to drive in a run. Left handed hitter. Lefty-lefty matchup here for Shark and the pitch. That's in there for a strike 0-1. We've had some interesting games, some wild games at this field here in Indianola over the years. And already some interesting runs in this game. That pitch in the dirt all the way to the backstop. Mannery goes to get it, but not in time. Scoring is Carter, and the Indians lead 2-1. So there's been three runs scored in this game in this first inning. Two of them have come home on a wild pitch. The other one has come home on a delayed double steal. So far, this game is not doing anything for the RBI totals of the players at the plate. Base is empty now on a 1-1 count. Shark from the windup now. And the pitch to Belt. Outside corner, strike two. Well, and you hate to say it, but Atumwa had the run home and had second and third nobody out in that first inning and were not able to bring home those other runners. Now they trail by a run. Tanner's 1-2. Swing and a miss. Got him on a high fastball. Strike three. Bulldogs strikeouts this season are brought to you by Sonic Drive-In in Atumwa. Indians get two runs on one hit. There was an error, and nobody left on base. After an inning, Indians two, Bulldogs one on the Atumwa Radio Sports Network. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels you're watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Top of the second inning. Game one of the season for Atumwa, game five for Indianola. The Indians lead the Bulldogs two to one. Bulldog baseball this season brought to you by Rotor Rooter on Gateway Drive for 24 7 emergency plumbing services, including nights, holidays, and weekends. Rotor Rooter Atumwa, your specialist in plumbing and water cleanup. 7 8 9 do up for the Bulldogs. Cam Maneri, Lucas Barnes, and Luke Reinhardt. Manary, I should say. I remember right. Freshman catcher for Atumwa. First pitch he sees in a varsity uniform is a strike 0 1. Daniel Keebler on in relief of Gavin Leg. Came on after Leg walked the first three batters of the game. The 0 1 is up and away. One ball, one strike to Cam. Right-handed batter, slightly open stance, the pitch. Breaking ball on the inside corner, strike two. One 
One and two to the number seven hitter in the Itzamo order. Catcher sets up away. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. And that's out number one. That'll bring up Lucas Barnes, the right fielder. And that'll bring up number 22, the right fielder, Lucas Barnes. Barnes, a year ago, appeared in 25 games for Itzamo. Hit 385 in 13 at-bats and drove in five runs. First pitch. There's a liner to left. That'll be down for a base hit, and that's Tomo's first hit of the season. So Lucas Barnes is on with one out, and that'll bring up the second baseman, Luke Reinhardt. And with one out, that'll bring up number eight. Reinhardt, a junior. And this will be his first varsity at-bat. Reinhardt did have a stolen base last year in a pinch running effort. Now there's a throw to first and it gets away. Barnes around second. He's on his way to third. Here comes the throw, sailing into third and it is not in, oh, they're gonna say it's in time. That was not in time, come on. The throw got there, but he had to reach to make the tag. And the hand was in there before the tag was down. There's no way he's out. Barnes's hand was on the third base bag before that tag was on him. That tag was not on him in time, and the, um, the, the, the base umpire is not even letting Coach Yeager appeal their home plate umpire to get help. Boy, we're... We're in. We're at the top of the second inning. We've already got an ump show going on because the umpire is yelling and pointing at, at Coach Yeager. So anyway, first pitch to Reinhardt. After all that, swing and a miss, strike one. You know, every year I say I'm going to try to be a little kinder and gentler to the officials, and then, boy, this guy is just going to be Sheriff Barney Fife over here and have none of the objection. Pitch on the inside corner, count 0 and 2. So that is an error on Keebler, the pitcher, allowing Barnes to go to second, but then it is 3 to 5 in the scorebook on the putout. Pitch misses in the count 1 and 2. Two out, nobody on. And as somebody walks in front of the camera, the pitch is high and inside, two and two. I mean, the throw was better than I thought it would be, and the play was close, but it, the hand was on the bag before the tag was made. Anyway, swing and a miss, strike three. And a frustrating top of the second ends for Atumwa. No runs, one hit, one air, nobody left. Go to the bottom of the second, 2-1 Indianola on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. All roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. You're watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Bottom of the second inning. Indianola 2, Ottumwa 1. Game 1 of our doubleheader here in Indianola this afternoon to open the season. Gavin Leg, or pardon me, this won't be Leg, this should be Keebler. And then Lane McGraw and Andrew DeWall do up. Bottom of the second inning is number 12, Dan Keebler. So Keebler. Right-handed batter, tall, lanky hitter. 
Takes a pitch off the inside corner from Tanner Shark for ball one. Now the 1-0. Check swing, it came in high, 2-0. Lefty to righty, Sharks 2-0 pitch. On the inside corner at the knees, 2-1. Keebler is 2-4 for four on the season. A couple of singles, a couple of runs batted in. The 2-1. Lifted to right, shallow, or to make the play is Lucas Barnes for out number one. That'll bring up the first baseman, Lane McGraw, for Indianola. McGraw, senior. Two for nine, hitting 222 in three games. Single, a double, and an RBI. It's all right-handed batter, bit of an open stance. Kind of up towards the front of the batter's box a little bit. And he swings and misses at a high fastball, strike one. Don't often see a batter well, maybe he's not quite as far up as I thought as he settles back in, but he's not hugging the back line like most hitters do. That pitch on the outside corner from Shark 0-2. Each team has a hit. Tomwa has committed an error. They should have an error on the board for Indianola, too, but that was a weird play. Pitch bounced in there, and it's one and two. Again, if you're scoring it correctly, the play where Barnes was called out at third, it would be a throwing error on the pitcher because the error and pickoff throw allowed Barnes to get to second. He's then retired trying to go to third, but there's still an error on the play. As this one two pitch swung on a missed strike three, pulled the string on him with a changeup for out number two, and that is another Bulldog strikeout. The next batter is number 15. The Brought to you by Sonic Drive In in the Tumble. Andrew DeWall. Second strikeout for Shark, and the batter is the right fielder, Andrew DeWall. First pitch to the right-handed batter is swung on, grounded down the line to third, off the glove of Thompson and into shallow left field. And it's recovered over there quickly by Saner. He will hold the wall at first. And the batter will be the number nine hitter, Luke Rockhold. Rockhold, the center fielder. One for four on the young season with an RBI. They're putting a hit on the board for that one. And again, that was kind of a do or die backhand play down the line and it ricocheted off of Thompson. A little right down base hit, that might be a tad generous. Lefty to lefty here in the pitch low and away ball one to Rockhold. Shark retired the first two. Now trying to pitch around the two out base runner, DeWall. That pitch right in there for a strike count evens at one and one. DeWall has not attempted to steal yet this year. Indianola has 13 stolen bases on the year. That's from nine different base stealers. The one one. Swing and a foul back and the count one and two. Top of the order, Bennett Bruick on deck. Shark does not want to see him again until the third inning. Two out runner on first here in the bottom of the second. Indians leading 2-1. Runner goes, the pitch fouled off to the left over the Otomo dugout third base side and over towards the flagpole. Count stays at one and two. Very late swing by Rockhold there, just trying to stay alive. New baseball for Shark. Gets a sign from the catcher, Cam Mannery. Runner 
Runner doesn't go this time, and the pitch pop foul back off the top of the screen. And Rockhold stays alive at one and two. Turned out to be a pretty comfortable afternoon. The lights are on. It is overcast. Thankfully, no rain falling. Another one-two pitch. Fouled straight back. If there wasn't a screen, Andy would have caught that ball. Still one and two. Rockhold, the number nine hitter, giving Shark a pretty good battle right here. Griner holding DeWall on at first. And Shark steps off, bluffing DeWall back to the back. DeWall ran on the first one and two pitch. It was fouled off. He's not run on the last two. Gets out to his lead. He's going. The pitch, little roller towards second, charging it. Reinhard, and Reinhard will throw out Rockhold to end the inning. No runs, one hit, one left. After two, Bulldogs down two to one. Coming to bat in the top of the third on the Atomal Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. You're watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Top of the third inning. It's Humble Baseball on KBIZ on the live video stream as well. Bulldogs trailing Indianola 2-1. to one. Top of the order due up for OHS. Saner, Thompson, and Griner, the three hitters that faced Indianola starter Gavin Legg in the first inning. Legg walked all three of them. But it's Humble only got one run home out of it as Daniel Keebler has come on and pitched two solid innings for his team in relief. Saner walked, stole second and third, and scored on a wild pitch in the first inning. Got that uniform dirty in a hurry. Right-hander to right-hander, Keebler's pitch. Off speed, low and away, ball one. Saner's not going to see a full count every time he bats, but his ability to take pitches is a big plus to having a leadoff hitter. The 1-0. He chops this one to third slowly. Up with it is... Carter, the throw across in time for out number one. I somehow knew that the moment I mentioned Miles Saner taking a lot of pitches in his first at-bat, he was going to swing at the very next pitch. My announcer's jinx still works perfectly. Carter Thompson, the batter, he walked in the first inning, was eventually stranded at third. First pitch to Carter he is lifted into right center field, and that's going to hang up there long enough for Rockhold to make the catch, moving to his left for out number two. Good swing by Carter that time. And that'll bring up Adam Griner, who walked and stole a base his first time up. And that'll bring up the first baseman, number 10, Adam Griner. Griner digs in. Last time we saw him before today in, in action, he was leading scorer for Otomo basketball this past season. Takes a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Somewhat down 2-1, to one, top of the third inning. The 0-1. Outside, 1-1. One and one. Keebler from the first base side of the rubber, just a bit. And the 1-1 one -one pitch, low and away, 2-1. and one. Mm -hmm. 
mentioned in his first at bat or his first plate appearance that Griner was a little strikeout prone last year, but my eyes tell me in the early going he looks a little more patient this year. He fouls that breaking ball off the bottom of the zone. The count evens two and two. Tanner Shark on deck if Griner can keep the inning going. Two and two to the Bulldog first baseman. The pitch. Breaking ball, pop foul off to the right out of play. Griner spoiled a pretty good off-speed pitch there. Stays alive at two and two. Bulldogs only one hit so far. That was Lucas Barnes in the second inning. The 2-2 to Adam. Fouled straight back. Timed it well, just got underneath it a bit. Still two and two. Keebler leans in to get the sign. Another 2-2 pitch to Griner. Lined in the center field base hit. Griner timing an off-speed pitch perfectly. Right back up the middle. Frozen rope into center field. Two-out hit for Griner. And the batter is Tanner Shark, who fouled out his first time up. The next batter is going to be the pitcher. Number two, Tanner Shark. Shark, a chance to help his own cause. He did have a couple of home runs last year, and... The wind is blowing out to right, although it has died down considerably from pregame warm-ups. Keebler steps off the rubber and fakes a throw to first. Griner stole a base on him in the first inning. That pitch lined into left center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. It's cut off over there. Griner hustling for third, and he'll get there safely as the throw gets away from the shortstop, Blake. Boy, Griner really aggressive there. I thought that might have been a bad idea, but I don't think the left fielder belt was expecting it. And then behind him as that throw got away, Shark got into second. And now Javen Rominger with a chance to tie the game or maybe give a tum with the lead back. He popped out to short his first time up. Back-to-back -back two out hits for a tumble here, and then aggressive base running, putting two in scoring position. The pitch, way outside, good stop by the catcher Grimsrud. That was threatening to be another wild pitch. Each team has already scored a run on a wild pitch in this game. 1-0 to Rominger. Bulldogs trying to put together a two-out rally here, second and third. The 1-0. High and away, 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. Griner at third, Shark at second, the pitch. Letter high, strike two and one. Somewhat down two to one, but a big two out threat here in the third. Keebler's two one. Checked his swing, low and away, three and one. Good eye there by Rominger. He's got the sluggers count now. Tucker Long on deck. Three balls and a strike. The pitch. High fly ball to the left. Going back his belt, but he'll have room. Shy of the track, he'll make the catch to retire the side. Good cut by Rominger, but he just missed. No runs, two hits, an error, and two left. We go to the bottom of the third, Atumwa down 2-1 to one on the Atumwa Radio Sports Network. At Family First Chiropractic, it is our goal to get you and your family as healthy as possible and keep you healthy for the rest of your life. We deliver an elevated level of care for the entire family. We approach healthcare from a holistic view, incorporating multiple chiropractic techniques and physical therapy to ensure that our patients achieve the best results as fast as possible. We believe you deserve the best. A little preventative care now will eliminate pain management in later years. We want our kids to grow and live in active, healthy lifestyle. Get your family checked at Family First Chiropractic. You're watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network.
bottom of the third inning. That's almost trailing Indianola 2-1, game one of our season opening doubleheader, season opening for the Bulldogs anyway. Boy, and it's somewhat. If they don't win this game, they're going to feel the sting of runners left on base. They had a run home second and third, nobody out in the first inning, ended up leaving those runners at second and third. They had runners at second and third with two out in the top of this third inning, and Javen Rominger hit a high drive to deep left, but it hung up there long enough for the left fielder belt to make the catch, and again, runners stranded in scoring position. Now the top of the Indians order. Bennett Bruick, Brady Blake, Casey Carter. Bruick fouled out to Griner, the first baseman, right by the Indianola dugout his first time up. Lefty to righty, Shark to Bruick, and a liner in the left field for a base hit over towards the line. Fielding it, well, Saner bobbles it, but gets it back in quickly. And that'll hold Bruick to a leadoff single. Third hit of the game for the Indians. Each team now with three hits. And the batter, Brady Blake, who singled, went to third on an air and scored on a delayed double steal in the first inning. Blake digs in. He'll certainly play ball at the next level. Still only a junior. Pitch on the inside corner for a called strike. A lot of the best players in this game, both sides, are still underclassmen. Shark only a junior for a tumble on the mound. The 0-1. Chopper to short. Long's got it. Goes to second for one. The relay to first. Blake reaches on the field of Not in time. The Reinhard, the second baseman, just a moment of trouble getting the ball out of the glove, and I think that made the difference. Ball was slowly hit, but Atomo does get the lead batter on, or lead runner on the fielder's choice. Break, uh, Brady Blake now at first, and the batter Casey Carter, who walked, stole a base, and scored a run in the first inning. First pitch here, high, ball one. One and oh to Carter. Shark, runner goes, pitch down and in, throw down to second, will not be in time. He got into center, but backed up quickly by Rominger, and that'll hold Carter, or pardon me, hold Blake to the steal, his second of the game. Count is 2-0 to Casey Carter. Tanner wants a new baseball after that throw hopped through the dirt on the way to center field. Casey Carter, powerful right-handed batter, digs back in. Shark look back at second in the pitch. Down and in 3-0. Indianola leading at somewhat 2-1, to one, and the Indians threatening with the runner in scoring position and only one out here in the bottom of the third. 3-0 count to Carter, the pitch. Fly ball to left, shallow, coming on is Saner. He'll make the catch. Runners way off second. The throw back to second in time, and he's doubled off to end the inning. I don't know where Brady Blake was going. Saner with a fairly easy running catch out there in left field, and he doubles off Blake to get the Bulldogs out of the jam. No runs, one hit, nobody left. We go to the fourth. Bulldogs down 2-1 to one on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people. People with goals. People who want to save more. People that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels like home. 
You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Bottom, or pardon me, top of the fourth inning already. Game one of the season for Atoma moving right along. They trail here at Indianola, but only two to one. Each team with three hits. I've got each team with one air. Actually, I've got Indianola with two airs. Coming to bat, the top of the fourth inning will be number 20, the shortstop, Tucker Long. Tucker Long will lead it off for Atoma. He'll be followed by Cam Mannery and Lucas Barnes. Long grounded out to second his first time up. First pitch, chopper to first, fielded cleanly over there by McGraw. He will feed Keebler, the pitcher, on the bag for out number one. Second baseman Brick over to McGraw for out number one. That brings up Cam Mannery. Struck out his first time up. The next batter is Bulldog catcher number five, Camaro Maneri. Now our home plate umpire is walking toward the Atumwa dugout here. And my, he's over there, I think, talking to Coach Yeager, but I cannot actually, I can only see the lower part of their bodies there, and I'm not sure what was being discussed. My view partially blocked by the dugout there. We're ready to go now, and Mannery digs in. Keebler from the stretch, even with no one on base. Breaking ball sweeps low and away, ball one. It's somewhat down two to one in a ball game. They've already left four runners in scoring position. The 1-0, outside 2-0. Hitters count here for the freshman Mannery. The pitch. That one misses 3 0. I imagine the freshman here has the take sign from Coach Yeager, but we'll see. Waving that black bat over his shoulder. The 3 0, taking all the way. That's on the inside corner, 3 and 1. I would say patience wouldn't be a bad strategy for a Tumwa here. Keebler's on in relief. Now, he was probably always going to relieve Gavin Legg at some point in this game anyway. A 3-1. Chopper foul behind the play count fills 3-2. and two. But I'm guessing, however, that Indianola was hoping to get through the whole game with Legg and Keebler like they did in their season opener. And said Legg had to come, or Keebler had to come on in the first inning. But Tumwa can work... Keebler's pitch count up here. They might get deeper into that bullpen. And that pitch popped up foul. It's coming back, going right over our heads. It'll land right behind us. Count stays full to Cam Mannery, 3-2. and two. Thought for a moment there, Annie, you are going to have to catch that one. Still 3-2 and two to the Bulldog catcher. The kick and the pitch. Breaking ball up and in, ball four. Another Bulldog walk brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Ottumwa. Now are we going to get a courtesy runner for the catcher here? I believe that's what Coach Yeager is calling for. And it'll be Ryan McKinnon. Colton's younger brother, I believe. Going in to run at uh, first base. So McKinnon, the runner at first, and here's Lucas Barnes at the plate, singled his first time up. Pitch up and in, ball one. One on, one out. And now time called, and 
Indianola's head coach, John Fitzpatrick, wants to talk to his pitcher who's suddenly struggling with command. Nobody up in the Indian bullpen. Pitch count on Daniel Keebler. 43 pitches is where he's at right now, so he's probably got plenty in the tank. Certainly he's nowhere near the limit. As this 1-0 pitch is on the outside corner for a called strike, 1-1. One and one. McKinnon gets a pretty big lead over there. And he's running, and the pitch is lined in the left field by Sitt. McKinnon will have to stop at second. Well, the ball got away for a moment from Belt out there, but McKinnon had already come to a stop. The hit and run works, although you're wishing the ball had been hit anywhere but over towards the left side that wouldn't let McKinnon go to third. But Barnes is two for two. And now with two on and one out, the batter Luke Reinhardt, who struck out his first time up. Keebler looks back at second in the pitch. And there's a fly ball to shallow center. Out and making the catch is the shortstop Blake for out number two as the runners have to hold. So top of the order, Miles Saner. 0 for 1, walked and scored in the first, grounded out to third in the third. Third inning out of four that Atum was had two runners on. Now let's see if Sainer can come up with a big hit to tie the game. You hit this to the outfield, and as fast as Ryan McKinnon is, he's probably coming home. First pitch. Breaking ball fouled back. Sainer tried to time it, and the count 0-1. You could see Miles trying to wait back on that pitch and just couldn't quite make it happen. Still in there, 0-1. And the next offering, low and away, one ball, one strike. McKinnon way off second. They throw behind him, but he's back in safely. One and one to Sainer, the leadoff hitter. Skies are still almost completely overcast, but it's brightened up a little bit here in Indianola. Now the one one. Late swing and a foul off to the right out of play, one and two. Carter Thompson on deck if the inning continues. Next pitch for Keebler will be his 50th of the ball game. The 2-2. And it hit him. And the bases will be loaded for Thompson. Off-speed pitch, it just never took the break. And it ends up catching a piece of Saner's arm. Is number 19. So Saner down to first, McKinnon to third, Barnes to second, and here is Carter Thompson who has walked and flied to center. Thompson hit a ball to pretty deep right center field that was run down by the center fielder Rockhold back in the third inning. Bases loaded, two out, top four, dogs down two to one, but threatening. The pitch, outside corner at the letters, strike one. Third time in four innings, the Tumwas had runners at second and third with two out. They're loaded here in this instance in the pitch. Called a strike on the outside corner. Thompson checked his swing, and I don't think he was too sure about that call. 0-2. A bulldog at every base, but two out and a no-two count to Thompson. Griner on deck if the inning were to continue. The pitch. Low and away, one and two. Try to get him to chase, and Carter would not offer. I'm Carter, I'm looking away here. You you wonder if if the, after the hit batter to Saner, if Keebler's a little spooked about going inside. Catcher sets up away again. The one two, ground ball up the middle, off the mound though, and it ricochets to the second baseman Brook, and he flips to the bag at second, in time to retire the side. 
No runs, one hit, three left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's almost still down two to one on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. All roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Bottom of the fourth inning, Atumwa's had the better scoring chances, but Indianola has the lead in game one of our baseball doubleheader, Indians two, Bulldogs one. Four, five, and six due up for Indianola here. Casey Stecker, Cooper Belt, and Daniel Keebler. Tanner Shark for OHS has allowed two runs, none earned, on three hits through three innings. I've got him at 38 pitches so far. That's fairly efficient. Only had seven pitches in that third inning. Stecker grounded a short his first time up. Cleanup hitter, designated hitter for the Indians. The pitch. And a liner into left field. That's going to get over the head of Saner and roll all the way out to the fence. That will be picked up out there by Miles, fires it back in, and he holds Stecker to a leadoff double. Tumwa had Saner playing a little shallow and over towards the line, and he had no chance to get to that one. So now Shark will have to pitch around the leadoff double. That ball was tattooed, and the batter is Cooper Belt, who struck out his first time up. Shark has struck out two through the first three innings. First pitch here to Belt. Shows bunt. Bunts at it and misses. Strike one as Stecker gets back to second. A little interesting to me, at least, that the Indians are playing small ball here. Or at least they tried on the first pitch. We'll see if they continue. Shark a couple looks back at second, bunt shown again, bunted at and missed, but it's in the dirt. And down to third goes Stecker, and that'll have to go into the books as a wild pitch. So it's 0-2, but now they've got the runner at third anyway and didn't need an out to get him there. Stecker did not look comfortable trying to put that bunt down. Now the 0-2, up high, 1-2. and two. Atumwa has not brought the infield in, although Thompson is only a step or two behind the bag. Middle infielders are halfway, and Griner is just a step or two behind the bag at first. Sharp Griner to an infielder, they might come home. Shark needs a strikeout, the 1-2. Swing and a miss. Got one on a high fastball for out number one. Second time Belt has gone down on strikes. Another Bulldogs strikeout. Brought to you by Sonic Drive-In in Ottumwa. So here's Daniel Keebler trying to help his own cause. He flew out to shallow right his first time up. Tall right-handed batter. Shark has his sign and the pitch. A little bit high is the call, ball one. Tanner's 1-0, inside corner, strike one.
One and one to Keebler. Infield still playing about halfway. And the pitch. Fouled back to the screen, one and two. Well, Shark in position to get another strikeout. That would be big. A leadoff double, goes to third on a wild pitch. Then one strikeout. Another strikeout here and all of a sudden. The Indians would have to get a hit or a misplay to get the run home. Right now they don't need a hit to get the run home if Keebler can hit the ball in the air, the pitch. And he flies it to right. It's kind of shallow over towards the line. Barnes makes a catch. Runner tags. Throw comes in. The relay to the plate is not in time. And the sack fly makes it 3-1. Keeper hit a nice long fly ball out to right field, which is hauled in by Barnes. So two down, nobody on, but now 3-1 Indianola. And believe it or not, that is the first RBI of the game. Four runs total scored in this game. Two on wild pitches, one on on delayed double steal. And now finally, an RBI on a sacrifice fly. So we still don't have any RBI hits in this game. Lane McGraw, the batter, he struck out his first time up. Shark from the windup and a breaking ball grounded. Knocked down by Shark on the mound and he'll flip to first in time to get the out. Shark was falling off to the mound to the third base side. He had to reach with the backhand all the way around. Got his glove on the ball, made a nice play. One run, one hit, and nobody left. After four, Bulldogs down 3-1 to one on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. Hello, this is Lisa Bittner, clinic manager with Mercy One Atomo Family and Internal Medicine. We specialize in pediatrics to geriatrics, internal medicine, and family practice. Basically, from babies to grandparents, we are here for you. We want to be your primary care provider. Call us at 641-683-0800 to schedule an appointment. Mercy One Atomo Family and Internal Medicine Clinic, 522 North Hancock Street in Atomo. Your best life, our one purpose. Visit mercyone.org. You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Top of the fifth inning. Bulldog Baseball brought to you by Bridge City Realty. Whether you're looking to buy your next home or sell your current property, they'll be with you every step of the way. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's trusted experts. Tumwa down, now 3-1 to one to Indianola. The Bulldogs have already stranded seven on base, six of those in scoring position. And Indianola just tacked on an insurance run with a sack fly in the bottom of the fourth. Griner, Shark, and Rominger, 3-4-5, and five, do up for the Dogs here in the fifth inning. Anybody gets on, Tucker Long. Griner has walked and singled. He's stolen a base. It's almost had a lot of base runners in this game, but only the one run so far. Daniel Keebler's pitch sails in upstairs. Ball one to Griner. One and zero to Adam. And the pitch. That's right down Broadway. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Outfield pretty much straight away for Adam. The 1-1. One -one. Swing and a high fly ball foul off to the right out of play. And the count 1-2 and two on the Bulldog first baseman. Keebler from the stretch, even with no one on base. The one-two. High fly ball down the line in left. Belt heading over and in fair territory right by the line makes the catch for out number one. That'll bring up Tanner Shark, one for two of the single. And the next batter is number two, the pitcher, Tanner Shark. Griner and Shark had back-to-back -back singles with two out in the third inning. They went to second and third on a throw that got away, but they were stranded. Now Shark takes a pitch on the inside corner for a called strike 0-1. Oh, 
I don't think that's where Keebler meant to throw that pitch, but it ended up in the zone on the inner half. Looked like the catcher had to reach across his body there. 0-1. Long pause by Keebler, and time called before the pitch was thrown. Tanner digs back in, no balls and a strike. Righty to lefty, and that pitch downstairs. That'll even things up one and one. John Yeager in his familiar spot, coaching third base side. Look, go, Matt. First base coach once again this year, and the Bulldog pitching coach. The one one. Shark lines it to third, but it's caught by Carter for out number two. Tanner with a good opposite field swing, but unfortunately right at Casey Carter. Two down for Javen Rominger, who popped a short in the first inning, then flew out to deep left in the third. First pitch on the way, and there's a high fly ball to center, drifting back is Rockhold, and he'll make the catch to retire the side, and that's the first one, two, three inning for either team today. We go to the bottom of the fifth, the tumble down 3-1 on the Atumble Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier together so let's get to know each other because together is better you're watching live coverage of the Atumwa bulldogs on the Atumwa radio group sports network Bottom of the fifth inning. Indianola, three runs, four hits, two errors. Atumwa, one run, four hits, one error. Tanner Shark, 48 pitches through four innings. Hasn't been as sharp as he would like, but his team's still in the game. Trailing 3-1, Bulldogs right now. It's more about ruining the missed opportunities with runners on base when they've been at bat. Eight, nine, and one do up for the Indians here in the fifth inning. DeWall, Rockhold, and Bruick. Andrew DeWall singled his first time up. A two-out single in the second inning, and he ended up being stranded at first. The Indians in the bottom of the fifth inning is number 15, the right fielder, Andrew DeWall. Adam Greiner is... Having a conversation with, well, we'll get to that in a moment. That pitch inside and low to DeWall 1-0. Griner was, continues to have a conversation with the Indianola first base coach and the base umpire over there. It's an amicable conversation. I just wonder what they're talking about. That pitch downstairs, and it's 2-0 and to DeWall. That conversation's still going on between pitches. Now Sharks 2-0. A little bit high, 3-0. Tanner's only walked one through four innings. He struck out three. And the pitch. Line foul into the left field corner. Sharply hit by DeWall, but out in front of it, 3-1. and one. I'm a little surprised he had the green light 3-0. and oh. Now 3-1. and one. DeWall has bright pink cleats on. Notice that his first time up. The 3-1. Down and in ball four. Second walk issued by Shark. Second time DeWall has reached. 
And with one on, nobody out, the batter, Luke Rockhold. Second time in as many innings, third time in as many innings that the leadoff man has reached for the Indians. Tomo probably should be watching for a bunt here. Number nine hitter at the plate. Got a delay here. And I... Is there something amiss with the home plate umpire's mask? I can't quite see what he's working on, but I think that might be it. And while whatever equipment malfunction is being worked on here, Tucker Long goes over to talk to Carter Thompson, shortstop and third baseman conversing. Adam Greiner. Conversing with the base runner to wall over at first. Tanner Shark kind of flipping the baseball in his left hand. And I believe the umpire has gotten the mask the way he wants it again. But he's still fidgeting with the straps, but it's back on his head. And now Rockhold stands in. Lefty-lefty matchup here. One on nobody out, bottom five. Otomo down a pair. Bunt shown. Pitch is taken for a strike, delayed steal, throw down to second. The catch, the tag, and out at second. What a play by the second baseman, Luke Reinhardt. Had to catch that short hop throw while he was falling down, and he still got the tag on DeWall. So it's a caught stealing two to four for out number one, and that is the first time in his young varsity career that Cam Mannery has thrown out a base runner trying to steal. So now it's one out, nobody on, and an 0-1 count to Rockhold. Sharks pitch, swing, and a miss. Fooled him badly on the breaking ball there, 0-2. And, no balls, two strikes. The wind and the pitch. Grounder over the mound, up the middle, long sliding stop, and he can only knock it down. Boy, Tucker Long almost made a great play there, but couldn't keep it in the glove as he slid to knock that ball down. So that'll be an infield hit by Rockhold. Hit number five of the game for the Indians, and back to the top of the order for Bruick, who's one for two with a single. How big now is that caught stealing? Rockhold out to his lead. And the Indians have been a little jumpy with Shark's pickoff move. And there, Shark throws to first and Rockhold dives back in. There have been several instances through this game where an Indianola runner has actually jumped back towards the first base bag and then had to watch Shark pitch at home. And that happened again there, but that ball is ripped to left. It's foul down the line into the corner, but a foul ball in the count 0-1 to Bruick. You see it often with left-handed pitchers who have decent pickoff moves. A runner at first thinks maybe that throw's coming at first, so actually they hop back towards the bag, and then all their momentum's going the wrong way while the pitch comes home. Now a throw to first, and back in safely on a dive is Rockhold. Three runs, five hits, two errors for the Indians. One run, four hits, one error for the Bulldogs. One on, one out for Indianola here in the bottom of the fifth. The pitch. Pop foul back over my head again. And the count 0-2. And apparently we had no more new baseballs Ready for the ball game here. They're looking over towards the Indianola dugout. 
And they'll throw a ball out to Tanner. Now, Atuma produces a couple balls from their dugout. Those are foul balls that have been retrieved and brought back. So now the umpire has got a few extra to work with. 0-2 to the leadoff hitter, Bennett Bruick. One on, one out, bottom five. Atuma down 3-1. Shark trying to keep the Indians right there and give his team a chance to come back in the final two innings. That pitch a little bit down and in, one and two. Wonder if that's setting Bruick up for something away. One ball, two strikes. Runner goes, the pitch, down low, and the, with the breaking ball, no chance for Mannery to make a throw. Rockhold steals second. Count even at two and two, and now a runner at second with one out. Two balls, two strikes. Sun peeks through. First time we've seen that today. The pitch. A weak swing and a foul ball rolling up the first baseline. Very late cut there by Bruick. Either I can't tell if he cut it off the end of the bat or the handle because I couldn't see from my angle, but it did not have that strong ping sound. It was more like a dull thud, and the ball just kind of trickled up the first baseline, staying foul the whole way. Still two and two. Brady Blake on deck. Shark now has his sign. Reinhardt trying to hold the runner at second. The pitch, ground ball left side through the whole base hit. Up with it quickly is Saner, and stopping at third is Rockhold. Runners on the corners with only one out, and the batter is Blake who is one for two with a single and a run scored, a couple of stolen bases. Better hit a single through the infield for a base hit. We got runners at the corners, and the next batter is number nine. Now Indianola threatening to widen their lead here. Don't see any activity down toward Atoma's bullpen. Then again, I think both of a ton was relief options for this game are already in the lineup. Pitch inside to Blake, ball one. Took a picture of the lineup card before we started today, and I think Adam Greiner and Tucker Long are the first two relief options. At least that was the plan before the game, it appears, for OHS. The 1-0 to Blake. On the inside corner for a called strike. That's where Shark was trying to get it on the previous pitch. On the out-of-town scoreboard after an inning in Iowa City, your Iowa Hawkeye baseball team leads Indiana 1-0. That's a little bit different than yesterday's 30-16 affair that Iowa won over the Hoosiers. Runner goes from first, the 1-1 down and in. They will throw back to the pitcher, but they couldn't catch Rockhold off a third, and Bruick gets the steal. Runners now at second and third, the count two and one. And if you missed that yesterday, you heard me right. Iowa beat Indiana 30 to 16. I think Iowa was actually down in that game like 14 to two at some point and came roaring back. Infield comes in for a tumble here. The two one ripped into left field. Sainer with a dive and he makes the catch. Runner's gonna tag and score, but what a diving catch by Miles Sainer in left field for out number two. That took a hit away. That may have taken a second run away on that play. That'll actually be a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Brady Blake. Rockhold scores. Bruick stays at second. There's two down. And the batter, Casey Carter, who is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run score. Miles Saner with the play of the game to this point, even though a run scored on it. Now time called before the first pitch to Casey Carter.
Shark with the delivery, and that's inside for ball one. Yanino now leading four to one. Otomo got a run in the top of the first, but should have had more. They'll tell you that. Indians two in the bottom of the first, one in the fourth, and one here in the fifth. Those first two Indians runs were unearned. Now the 1-0. Swing and a miss. Fooled him pretty badly on that one, one and one. One ball, one strike. Carter stepped out for a moment, now digs back in. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, chased one high and away, one and two. A walk, a caught stealing, a single, a stolen base. Another single, another stolen base. And then a sacrifice fly and a great diving catch by Miles Saner. That's how this inning has gone to this point. Now the one, two. Pop foul back and out of play over the press box. We stay at one ball, two strikes. It's almost got work to do in the final two innings. Six, seven, and eight, Long, Mannery, and Barnes do up in the top of the six. Shark trying to get us there. The one, two. Pop up. Shallow right out is Ryan Hart calling for it. Second baseman makes the catch to retire the side. And Enola gets one run on two hits. They leave one. We go to the sixth inning. Bulldogs down four to one on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. Performance Pipe in Bloomfield is hiring. They have three classifications open for hire. Molding operators, a molding setup, and a maintenance position. Performance Pipe offers a competitive benefit package including medical, life insurance, pension plan, 401k, paid vacation, and holidays. Applicants must be 18 years or older, have a high school diploma or GED, and a valid driver's license. To apply, go to cpchem.com. Click careers, type in Bloomfield to see the details of each job and apply for the one that best suits you. Or Google Performance Pipe in Bloomfield and ask for D. Chevron Phillips Chemical Company is an equal opportunity affirmative action employer. You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Top of the sixth inning, getting late in game one for OHS. The Bulldogs trail here at Indianola 4-1. Tucker Long, Cam Mannery, Lucas Barnes do up for the dogs in this frame. Long is grounded out twice, once to second, once to first. And Long just out of eighth grade, already six feet tall. A lot of buzz about him in scouting circles. Already committed to the University of Iowa. Coming at the top of the sixth inning will be number 20, the shortstop, Tucker Long. He's had more hype about him as a pitcher than as a position player, but Coach Yeager telling me that he makes playing shortstop look very smooth. Let's see if he can find his first varsity hit here. Digs in from the left-handed side, red batting gloves, the pitch. Ground ball to second. Third ground ball hit to that side. Up with it is the second baseman, Bruick. Throw to first in timeout number one. Long has seen four pitches, and he's grounded out three times. That brings up Cam Mannery, the catcher. Has yet to put a ball in play. Struck out in the second. Walked in the fourth. Now coming to bat is number five, pitcher Cameron Maneri. Keebler has done the job since coming on in relief in the first inning. The pitch, up and away, ball one. Indianola starter Gavin Legg walked the first three hitters and got yanked. A run had already scored on him on a wild pitch. Keebler came in, stranded two runners at second and third as Mannery fouls it back one and one. He's allowed four hits since then. And he's pitched out of jams in the third and fourth innings. 
It's almost left runners at second and third in the third, left the bases loaded in the fourth. Now the 1-1 one -one to Cam. Called a strike on the outside corner, one and two. Keebler has set down the last five he's faced. And he's one and two on Mannery. The pitch, low and away, two and two. Sunshine peeks through again. Clouds are starting to break up a little overhead. The 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball stayed a little up and in. 3-2. and two. Patience certainly a virtue for these young Atumwa hitters. Mannery only a freshman. The 3-2. Chopper third base side foul. Rolls right to the feet of Coach Yeager. Still 3-2. Wind kicks up, and I think I just got a whiff of the hot dogs on the grill. That's not fair. I can't move right now. Three balls, two strikes. Cam Mannery trying to get a rally going with one out here in the top of the sixth. The pitch. And there's a drive to left, and it's over the head of left field, and it's gone! A solo home run for Cam Mannery. That's how you get a rally going, and it's 4-2. to two. Five ball over left field for a home run. Cam Mannery, a solo shot, first varsity hit, first varsity home run. Somebody go find that baseball. Hey, sorry about that, folks. I was on the wrong line. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. That was number two, number five. Cameron McNary that hit that home run out there in left field. Lucas Barnes, the batter. He's two for two with the pair of singles. Boy, off the bat. And to be honest, I didn't have a great view of the swing because somebody was walking down the aisle in front of me. But I looked over to left fielder belt, and he started in. Then he scrambled back, and I thought, well, that's going to burn him for a double. And the ball just kept carrying and went right over that yellow line out of the park. Now Barnes, a sharp grinder, but foul down the third baseline, strike one. I just threw a ball back in. I hope it wasn't the home run ball because the umpire just put it back in his pocket. I would have saved that for Cam Mannery. The 0-1 to Barnes. And there's a fly ball to left. That's pretty well hit. Going back his belt, but he'll get there and make the catch shy of the track for out number one. Pardon me, that's out number two. That sunshine is giving the left fielder Cooper Belt a problem out there. He had to shield his eyes and go find that one. So two down for Luke Reinhardt, who was struck out and popped out. There is activity now in the Atoma bullpen, and I think it's Adam Greiner. Pitch to Reinhardt up and in, ball one. Atoma get, getting a run back here in the sixth inning, a solo home run by Cam Mannery. Two out, nobody on the 1-0. And that's pop foul back behind the plate. Will the catcher Grooms Root have a play? No, right up against the fence. He cannot make the play. That might have caught the fence right before it got to his glove. Made a good effort on it. Count even at a ball and a strike. Someone down four to two now. Two out, nobody on top six. Pitch is high to Reinhardt, two and one. That home run for Mannery, the Bulldogs' fifth hit of the game. And now time called, and John Fitzpatrick, the Indianola coach, out to talk to Keebler. Are they going to take him out in the middle of an at-bat? Keebler not leaving yet, but yeah, it looks like they're going to have somebody change gloves and bring in a new pitcher here. So it's a call to the bullpen for the Indians in the middle of an at-bat. And I think it's a pitch count thing because the scoreboard shows the home team pitch count or for the home pitcher pitch count, and it's at 75, and I think that's all that they want Keebler to throw. So Indianola will bring in a new pitcher. We'll take 30 seconds, come back, and tell you about him on the Atomal Radio Sports Network. 
Hey everyone, this is Karina Drummond with Reflection Studio in Ottumwa. We are a full service salon offering hair, nail, brow, lash, facial, and waxing services. We also handle weddings, proms, and other large events with multiple person makeover sessions. So contact us early to get booked for your next event. We thank all of our loyal customers for your patronage and invite all newcomers to join our salon family. And remember, looking good doesn't happen by chance. It happens by appointment with Reflection Studio in Ottumwa. Like Reflection Studio on Facebook and visit ReflectionStudio.com. That's Reflections with a Z. You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. The new pitcher for Indianola is right-hander Andrew DeWall who comes in from right field. And there's some other shuffling around here we'll try to figure out here in a moment. This is DeWall's first appearance on the mound this year. And looking at last year's stats, doesn't look like he pitched at the varsity level last year. So this might be his varsity debut on the mound. The third baseman, Casey Carter, has moved out to right. And I'm not 100% sure who's at third base now for the Indians. We'll try to figure that out. 2-1 to Luke Reinhardt, and he skies this third base side. Foul territory, and it will be the shortstop, Brady Blake, who calls off the third baseman to make the catch to retire the side. So Otomo gets a run on a hit, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Bulldogs down four to two on the Otomo Radio Sports Network. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels like home. You're watching live coverage of the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, and a tumble will go to the bullpen here. Adam Greiner will come on in relief of Tanner Shark, and Shark will simply move over and take his place at first base. Greiner, a year ago, made five appearances all in relief. Did not have a record, did have a save. That was in a win at Urbandale. And he had a 2.33 ERA. Opponents hit 214 against him. He walked 18, but he struck out, pardon me, let's read the right line here. He walked 12. Top of the, the bottom of the sixth inning, come to bat. No, that's not right either. <laughs> he walked four and he struck out 10. Got to get it right eventually. So Casey Stecker will be the first batter he faces. Stecker has grounded out, and he's doubled and scored one for two. That pitch lined into left field. Going back is Sainer. That's going to be over his head and one hopping against the base of the wall. Stecker on his way to second. That's his second double of the game. Move out batter. Stecker puts one out on the left field wall for a double. And that's going to bring up number one, the left fielder, Cooper Belt. Cooper Belt, the batter, is struck out twice. Both of those came against the starter, Tanner Shark. Shark's line, five innings pitched, four runs, only two earned, six hits, two walks, three strikeouts, 71 pitches. Griner's pitch to Belt, check swing called strike, 0-1. Tom 
Salmo got a run in the first, but left two in scoring position. Indianola two in the first, one in the fourth, one in the fifth. Bulldogs got one back in the sixth on the Mannery home run. Bunt shown, the 0-1. Bunted out and missed. It's in the dirt, though, and down to third goes Stecker. Second time he's advanced on a pitch in the dirt that was bunted at. Count is 0-2 to Belt. Stecker moved over to third base. No balls, two strikes. Boy, this inning is eerily similar to the fourth inning now, where Stecker doubled, went to third on a wild pitch when Belt was attempting a bunt. Stecker would eventually score. That pitch down and in, and the count one and two to Belt. In that fourth inning, Belt struck, would strike out, and then Keebler would hit a sack fly. Keebler is on deck now. Guessing if he's still in the game, maybe he moved over to third base after he was taken off the mound last inning. That pitch fouled back over the screen out of play. Still one and two. Infield in about halfway for Otomwa. Grinders one, two. Swing and a foul, barely fouled back off the end of the bat. As Belt stays alive. Still one and two to the Indians left fielder. Griner first base side of the rubber from the stretch, the pitch. Swing off the end of the bat and foul back to the screen. Somehow Belt got even less of that than he did the previous swing, but still managed to get just enough. Nicked it, as my softball team would say. Still one and two. People walking in front of the camera again. Long pause by Griner. And the pitch. Upstairs with a fastball, two and two. Runner at third, one out, bottom six. Indianola trying to add to a 4-2 lead. And the 2-2. In the dirt, good stop by Mannery, but the count fills, three and two. Nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Adam comes set. And the payoff. Lined into center field, coming on and making the catch as Rominger, runner tags. The throw into the shortstop, long the relay to the plate, not in time. A sack fly for Cooper Belt. His first RBI of the game. And it is 5-2. to two. All three RBI for Indianola in this game have been on sacrifice flies. The other two runs scored on a double steal and a wild pitch. The only RBI hit in this entire game is the Cam Manory home run for Otomwa. So here's Keebler, who's 0 for 1 with a sack fly and an RBI, and he fouls it back to the screen, 0 and 1. Next offering, inside, and it got a piece of him. Hit batter. So he goes down to first, and that will bring up the first baseman, Lane McGraw. They're going to run for Keebler here, but he's not pitching anymore, so it's not a courtesy runner. This is a pinch runner. I think I saw number two. Running to run for Keeper over there at first base is number two, Joseph Eganor. Joseph Eganor, the runner. And McGraw, the batter, he's struck out and grounded back to the mound. One on, one out. The pitch. On the outside corner for a called strike, 0 and 1. First baseman, Lane McGraw. 
Adam gets the sign. Now the 0-1. Runner goes, ground ball right side. Diving attempt by Shark off his glove. Ricochets to right on at second. The throw to third is high. The tag is down. And out at third is Eganor for out number two. So that play goes three to four to five for the second out as Eganor was running on the play. The hit and run nearly worked. Shark with a diving attempt. It deflects off him. Reinhardt hustling back to pick it up. Fires to third, where Carter Thompson puts the tag on Eganor for the second out. McGraw's at first, and the batter is the pitcher, Andrew DeWall, who is singled and has walked. That pitch came back, but not quite enough to the corner, 0-1. They give McGraw a base hit on that. But now there are two down. Boy, strange things happen in this field. There's a rope to left field, but right at Saner, who makes the catch to retire the side. The Indians get a run on two hits. They leave one. Last chance in game one coming up for Atoma. We go to the top of the seventh. Bulldogs trailing 5-2 to two on the Atoma Radio Sports Network. Are you looking for someone to capture the special moments in life, such as senior photos, weddings, family portraits, baby pictures, or even your furry friends? Look no further than Lee's Photography in Ottumwa to schedule your appointment. Brian, Connie, and the staff at Lee's Photography have the knowledge and experience to capture your special moments and make your vision come to life. Visit them on Facebook to see the range of their work. Lee's Photography on East 2nd Street, across from the Courier in Ottumwa, for all your all-around photography needs. You're watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Top of the seventh inning and top of the order due up for Atumwa. Need three to tie, four to go ahead here in the final inning. They trail five to two, game one of our doubleheader here in Indianola. Still trying to figure out what the Indians are doing defensively. I know I saw Casey Carter go out to right field when Andrew DeWall came in to pitch, but Carter's now back at third. So I'm not 100% sure who's in right field. Actually, that is Eganor, the who came in to pinch run for Keebler. So I'm guessing the Keebler played third base for that one pitch in the top of the sixth inning. And now that he's out of the game, he's been pinch run for. Eganor is in in right field here in the top of the seventh. Miles Saner has walked and he's been hit by a pitch. He's also grounded out 0 for 1. And the pitch from DeWall up and away, ball one. Andrew DeWall would be in line for the save here. That pitch downstairs, 2 and 0. Tumwell one in the first, one in the sixth. Indians two in the first, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. Pitch in the dirt again to Saner, 3-0. and oh. Tumwell needs base runners. I imagine Saner has the take sign. And he takes low and away ball four, a four-pitch walk to start the top of the seventh. There is no activity in the Indian Ola bullpen right now. Here's Carter Thompson, who has walked, fly to center, and bounced into a fielder's choice. Huge lead for Saner. And they throw to first. They've got him in a pickle. Throw down to second. Saner running back to first where DeWall's waiting. They throw to him, and Saner is tagged out. That'll go one, three, six, one. Picked off for out number one, and that was that was not what Atomo needed. Down three in the final inning, and that's what Coach Yeager is explaining to Miles right now. We needed you on base in that situation. Atomo needs base runners. Now the pitch to Thompson, in there for a strike, 0-1.
The next offering, breaking ball, looped onto the inside corner, big curve, 0-2. If it's a one-run game, maybe you take a chance to try to steal a bag in that situation, but it's almost down three. Fastball high to Thompson, one ball, two strikes. See if Carter can get on and reignite a rally here. Griner on deck, anybody gets on, Shark. That pitch swung and missed, it's in the dirt. The catcher Grimsrud will lob down to the first baseman, McGraw, to complete the put out, and there's two away. And that'll bring up Adam Griner, two out, nobody on. Griner is one for two with a single and a walk. Again, I said this early in the game. I know we're right behind the walkway here, and it, there's not much we can do about it. This is the best place to broadcast from. Griner takes a strike 0-1. But I'd be interested to know how many of the people, some people walk by have ducked under the camera. I'd be interested to know what the other people would think if they knew that they were on live video as they walked by. Griner takes another strike 0-2. 0-2, oh, and, and I don't think it's almost like the last couple of calls here, but not much I can do about it. The 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball rolled back slowly towards the mound. Up with it is DeWall through to first, and that's the ball game. As Otomo drops its season opener to Indianola, game one of a doubleheader, final score, Indians 5, and Otomo 2. We'll take three minutes, come back, and get you the game one totals on the Otomo Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier, together. So let's get to know each other, because together is better. Nice job clearing the clog. Thanks. Do you know anybody who could repair the water damage in my basement? Roto-Rooter does that. Do you guys fix water heaters? Roto-Rooter does that. How about a leaky faucet? We do that. Disposal repair? We do that. I've got to run a few errands, but if you could finish up those pies, that'd be great. Thanks. And away go troubles down the drain. Pies? Okay. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels Hi, this is Vince Tyson, General Manager with Citizens Mutual in Bloomfield, the area's premier broadband provider. Buffalo County, we have heard your screams of frustration. You need reliable internet, and we are proud to expand high-speed fiber internet into Wapolo County. Express your interest today by going to findmyfiber.mycmtech.com. Again, that's findmyfiber.mycmtech.com. We look forward to hearing from you and bringing you the very best internet service at Citizens Mutual, coming soon to Wapolo County. County. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. It's more than an education. It's more than a degree. William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Opportunity in a diverse student body. Opportunity in a staff that works with your budget. Opportunity in over 30 programs of study. Opportunity in a classroom where your voice is heard. Find your future and the opportunities waiting for you. Start your planning today at wmpenn.edu and see why William Penn University is alive with opportunity. You are watching live coverage of the Atumwa Bulldogs on the Atumwa Radio Group Sports Network.
It's Hummel High Baseball on KBIZ and on the live video stream. Game one of the season in the books. It goes the way of the home team, Indianola. The number 10 team in Class 4A knocks off a tumble by a score of 5-2. to two. For the Indians, five runs, eight hits, two errors. They left three on base. Daniel Keebler, the winning pitcher in relief, came on after starter Gavin Legg walked the first three batters. Keebler only allowed one run over five and two-thirds innings. He is now 2-0. and oh. Andrew DeWall got the save his first. For a somewhat two runs, five hits, one error, seven left on base. Tanner Shark the loss 0-1. Oh only home run in the game was off the bat of a tumble catcher, Cam Mannery, his first of the season. Ball game took one hour and 50 minutes to complete. A starts off 0-1. Indianola improves to 4-1. Game two coming up in just a little while, and so what we'll do between games is on the video side, we'll let you uh, meet a few more of our great sponsors and then just leave the video feed on silent for a little while until we're ready to get you set up for game two. On the radio side, we'll take a three-minute timeout and then come back with Radio Iowa News and Radio Iowa Sports. We'll be back here in just a little while with the lineups and the preview of the second game of the night. Bulldogs drop game one, five to two, but another game coming up in just a little while. So keep it right here on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier, together. So let's get to know each other, because together is better. All roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced, professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. Wondering what to have for lunch or supper? Stop in and see Mike and his team at Mike's Pizza and Steakhouse. Whether you want amazing Greek food, pasta, salads, sandwiches, fish, chicken, steak, or the best pizza in town, they have what you want. They are always open for carryout, and their full menu is available at mikespizzasteakhouse.com. Thank you, Southern Iowa, for making Mike's Pizza and Steakhouse your favorite restaurant and your favorite pizza place. Proud to support the Atumwa Bulldogs. Opa! 